Hey everybody, this is Shane from Shane's Books and Review. Today we're going to be talking about Jordan B. Peterson, 12 Rules for Life, an Antidote to Chaos. Now, I've read a lot of books in my life and typically I steer away from self-help books. It's not that I think that I'm too good for them, it's that usually whenever I find one that somebody has said, hey, you ought to check this out. It's usually an opinion piece. It's not usually something by a clinical psychologist that seems to actually get humanity as a whole. Now, a little bit of a preface here. I first found out about Jordan Peterson whenever I was watching H3H3 podcast. And it was kind of one of those odd things of I just happened to tune in and I was like, hey, this guy is good. He's got a lot of things that he's talking about that really seem to be hitting home on the way that people react, the way that people communicate, and, and his views were not necessarily astray or wrong, but they were controversial for sure in some ways, and then in other ways they just had so much common sense wrapped into them, I was like, wow, way to go you. So I started looking into this guy a little bit more, and I found that he is a course, like I mentioned previously, a clinical psychologist, and that he's a professor. A lot of the times whenever somebody has a YouTube channel or if they have uh, things that they do that are social media based, it all seems to be orientated where you get just snippets of the information or what they're going on about, and then you have to buy everything else, and you never know what you're going to get. Sometimes if you do something like that with video LUTs or with um, instructional type things you know it'll look good on the surface and then you get into it and you're like I, I paid for this why he's got a different way of going about this instead of showing you the tip of the iceberg which is the best information and then the rest of us just filler that's really not important or important to me and or possibly you everything he's got is online for free his lectures in college are free his uh, speaking events, everything you can find, they're there available to you if you got interested in him, which I respect because in the way that he makes money is he's got a Patreon site and instead of charging you for exclusive content, it's just all there. Uh, and if you happen to give the guy some money, awesome, cool. I respect that in a big way. Whenever I first picked up his book, I didn't realize that the guy is a devout Christian. Uh, not that I'm saying anything wrong with that, not that I'm saying that that's a bad thing, but let's be upfront about it. A lot of the times, whenever somebody's a religious individual and they're trying to prove a point on today's society, it's a circular type argument, and there's no backup. You, there's, it's just, this is my opinion, and my opinion is fact. Not that only religious people do that. There are plenty of people in the world, if you talk to them long enough, you'll find that their opinion is indeed fact, regardless of things being completely contrary to that statement that they've made. And there's nothing to back it up at all. It's just, this is the way I feel, and you should accept that, and now we're moving on. Wait a minute, you've got something else to say? Jordan B. Peterson doesn't go about things this way. Instead, the way he goes about it is he will tell a story first, and then after he tells a bit of a story, he will explain the psychological side of things and how things relate to said story, and then he will make his point after the fact, and then how everything ties together, which I feel is a better way of having a conversation than people just raising their voice and getting louder and louder, and whomever is the loudest person is indeed the right person. So, eh, you know, I've had a lot of that in the last three or four years, and it seems like it's only getting worse. So hopefully, hopefully, more people will get this book and read it and realize one of his chapters directly applies to them. Assume whom you are talking to may know something that you don't. Also, in today's world, there's no reason to argue about things to that extent, really, because, I mean, you've got Google at your fingertips, or Yahoo, or Bing, or, or Cortana, or whatever you want to use, and you can actually fact search yourself in the middle of a conversation. And it would be polite first if you said, hey, you know what, maybe I'm not right on this, let me, let me see what's going on here. 
and then look it up yourself instead of just blatantly arguing a point that you probably think you're wrong on anyway. Anyhow, enough about that. Let's get to the book. So, I wasn't expecting, like I said, for him to be such a religious individual. A lot of the time, scientific community, if they are religious, they keep it to themselves. They don't just wear it on their sleeves. I think that most agnostics or even deadpan, I hate Christianity type people would be able to read this book through its entirety and not be offended. Because he's not a it's-in-your-face religion. He's using the Bible and the parables and stories to relate these chapters in a way that's unique and refreshing, really. Uh, because instead of it's, it's my way and I'm this type of person and I'm this, this part of Christianity and I've got this label because I am of this, this facility, it, none of that is even brought up. It's just, instead, it's just this. In one of his lectures that I watched recently, he was talking about man, woman, and how they are indeed a snake that pops up. So he goes through this whole thing about Adam and Eve and in the garden and the snake and this, that, and the other. And he's like, you know, so what we do is we end up building this wall around our city. And whenever we do that, we're protecting ourselves from the things that are outside. However, once we do that, and we are protected from those things outside, then that lets the snakes pop up inside of the city. And what he was talking about was the human condition there, and, and how we relate to that evil. It's good. He's, he's really, he's good. If you haven't heard of him before, perhaps you should check him out. Now, as far as his book goes, it was a delight to read. It really was. Typically, these kinds of books are kind of preachy and downtrodden and you need to change this about yourself and you need to change this about yourself and incorporate these changes. That's not the way his book is structured at all. Instead, it's just simply put 12 rules to help you get past some chaos. That's, that's me paraphrasing, but he explains the idea of what order and chaos is and how that relates to people and how we can indeed deal with different situations in life and if you've never thought about it in a different light than where you're at because let's be honest a lot of us get stuck in a rut this might indeed help some people that feel overwhelmed or feel that they're just not good enough because because you may come to a realization after you read this that indeed it might not be you that is the one that's having the issue it might be the things around you he does help you rationalize events and things that are happening around you, which is pretty cool. Let's get into some of the chapter names, because the chapter names I found an incredibly fun thing, because I never knew where the name was going to pop up. Sometimes the chapter name itself is inside the chapter, I think maybe one or two of them it wasn't, but that, <laughs> that was a fun part of the book. So I'm going to cheat just a little bit, and I'm going to reference this instead of using my memory, because Let's be honest, I would not get every chapter name correct, right? All right, so rule number one is stand up straight with your shoulders straight. Rule number two, treat yourself like someone you are responsible for helping. Rule number three, befriend people who want the best for you. Rule number four, compare yourself to who you were yesterday, not the useless person you are today. Rule number five, do not let your children do anything that makes you dislike them. Rule number six, set your house in order before you criticize the world. Rule number seven, pursue what is meaningful, not what is expedient. Rule number eight, tell the truth or at least don't lie. Rule number nine, assume the person you are listening to knows something you don't. Rule number 10, be precise in your speech. Rule number 11, do not bother children while they are skateboarding. And rule number 12, pet a cat when you encounter one on the street. Now, out of all these rules, the ones that I thought that actually may help me was one, rule number 12, pet a cat when you encounter one in the street, which isn't what you think it's about. And let's take that last chapter, for instance. He starts out with it talking about a cat in the headline, right? And then he goes on and on about dogs. 
uh, because he he didn't want to immediately excise himself from cat lovers, dog lovers, etc. But he was using that as a as a meaning, and I like the way that he wrapped all that around because it's it was kind of unique to see his take on slow down and and, and look, slow down and enjoy life. Um, it's not so much what he said, but that was the meaning that I got from it anyway. What makes this book so much more unique than other books that are of this kind of genre of self-help and or uh, proclamations of where we need to be in society or how to be a better person, etc.? Most of the ones that I've read in the past beyond this one have not necessarily been junk or trash, but they're certainly filler material just meant to get money from people. However, this one is really laid out a lot different. Uh, he will either start with an antidote about his own life or his own experiences, then he will make the point of the chapter, and then he will give information of this This is why this is happening or why it's happening and how you can deal with it in a way. And then there's usually a conclusion to that chapter. So almost each chapter is like a little mini book inside of itself, self-contained. And he will occasionally reference different roles in different roles once he has defined one previously. But it's not one of those things that it has you jumping back and forth in the book. And it's actually highly enjoyable to read. He talks about people that he knew in life, how they behaved, the reason why they had problems. He talks about a lot of different things. And one item that really kind of got my attention about all of this in this book was simply this. He didn't necessarily overshare, but he definitely shared some things that are very personal to him. He put himself out in the open, and he just, I wouldn't say he bared his soul completely, but he did let you have a glimpse of himself that just seeing him on TV or in YouTube, etc., on, on content, you just wouldn't have something that feels like a personal relationship with a guy. Which is kind of strange, because I felt like I knew him a whole lot better after I read the book than I did before, and I've never met the guy. Uh, if I ran into him on the street, or if he showed up at my house, I would certainly let the guy in. I would certainly feed him and say, hey, you know what, thank you for what you've done. And, you know, see what the man has to say, and definitely hear him out. Uh, and I can't say that for other authors that I've read. There are particular authors that I've read, in fact, that if they showed up at my house, I would look at them very suspiciously and then probably send them on their way. <laughs> I digress. So do I recommend getting this book? I don't know. It is a very well-wrote book. It is a very well-done book, and it's actually fairly enjoyable. So it gets high marks on all those. I'm not going to tell people that like reading sci-fi and or... Uh, space action adventure or that kind of a thing that this is your book because it's certainly not uh, And if you're closed off if you're not even willing to hear Anything around you you're not gonna like this book at all because the whole point of it is for self-reflection and Finding out just a little bit more about yourself because if you think about the things that the man's wrote in there You will certainly see a different side of yourself and not everybody would probably be ready for something like that. If you're not a awoke person, if you don't know your own consciousness yourself and who you are, where your limitations are, and where your boundaries are, you're probably not going to be ready for going into the deeper side of things and thinking on them. I don't want to be preachy. I'm going to say if you want to see a book that is wrote by somebody that has a very interesting perspective about things, people, and how things are going in the world today, I would certainly pick up his book. Again, that is Jordan B. Peterson. It is 12 Rules for Life and Antidote to Chaos. I highly enjoyed the book, and as always, I encourage you guys to read it and make your own assertions about it as well. And if you agree or disagree, let me know about it in that comment section down below. I'm highly interested to know what you guys think about this one. And beyond that, if you saw anything in here that you liked, make sure to gently massage on that subscribe button, click that like, and or share, because sharing is after all caring. On the next video, this will be done. You know why? I happen to find this guy from California, even though I'm in Kentucky. He travels back and forth. I found him through a mutual person, 
that was ripping down a barn out in Maceo. And I was like, hey, look, can I get some boards? I mean, I know that those planks are gonna be at least eight inches and they're probably gonna be every bit of 10 foot long. And that's exactly what I need. If it's old, if it's beat up, if it looks horrible, I'm gonna love this thing because I can turn it into something else. And he's like, yeah, sure, I'll give you two of them on one condition. Once you get done, you send me the picture so I can see what it looks like because it sounds interesting. I said, sure, why not? Let's do it, right? So I've got that out in my truck. And after I get done recording this video, this is what I'm doing. So that's a check mark off the list. With that being said, I hope you guys find a good book. And until next time, this has been Shane with Shane's Books and Review. And I will see you guys later.